Hi there. You're joining me today on day number 362. We're in our last four days of this reading plan. Thanks for sticking with it. I'm so glad you have. And today we get to see God in His glory and majesty. And we see our Savior come on a white horse. Let's turn to Zechariah 14. Unfortunately, we have not yet seen the fulfillment of this prophecy from the end of Zechariah 12. Then I will pour out a spirit of grace and prayer on the family of David and on the people of Jerusalem. They will look on me whom they have pierced and mourn for him as for an only son. They will grieve bitterly for him as for a firstborn son who has died. However, this part has been fulfilled from the beginning of chapter 13. On that day a fountain will be opened for the dynasty of David and for the people of Jerusalem, a fountain to cleanse them from all their sins and impurity. This, from Zechariah 13, was referred to by the Lord Jesus in Mark 14.27 in, or on the way to, the Garden of Gethsemane. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, the man who is my partner, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Strike down the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered, and I will turn against the lambs. Zechariah 14 Heading Jerusalem and the Nations Zechariah Speaks The day when the Lord will sit in judgment is near. Then Jerusalem will be looted, and the loot will be divided up before your eyes. The Lord will bring all the nations together to make war on Jerusalem. The city will be taken, the houses looted, and the women raped. Half of the people will go into exile, but the rest of them will not be taken away from the city. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as he has fought in times past. At that time he will stand on the Mount of Olives to the east of Jerusalem. Then the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west by a large valley. Half of the mountain will move northward and half of it southward. You will escape through this valley that divides the mountain in two. You will flee as your ancestors did when the earthquake struck in the time of King Uzziah of Judah. The Lord my God will come, bringing all the angels with him. When that time comes, there will no longer be cold or frost or any darkness. There will always be daylight, even at night time. When this will happen is known only to the Lord. When that day comes, fresh water will flow from Jerusalem, half of it to the Dead Sea and the other half to the Mediterranean. It will flow all year long, in the dry season as well as the wet. Then the Lord will be king over all the earth. Everyone will worship him as God and know him by the same name. The whole region from Geba in the north to Rimon in the south will be made level. Jerusalem will tower above the land around it. The city will reach from the Benjamin gate to the corner gate, where there had been an earlier gate, and from the tower of Hananel to the royal wine presses. The people will live there in safety, no longer threatened by destruction. The Lord will bring a terrible disease on all the nations that make war on Jerusalem. Their flesh will rot away while they are still alive. Their eyes and their tongues will rot away. At that time, the Lord will make them so confused and afraid that everyone will seize the man next to him and attack him. The men of Judah will fight to defend Jerusalem. They will take as loot the wealth of all the nations, gold, silver, and clothing in great abundance. A terrible disease will also fall on the horses, the mules, the camels, and the donkeys, 
on all the animals in the camps of the enemy. Then all of the survivors from the nations that have attacked Jerusalem will go there each year to worship the Lord Almighty as King and to celebrate the festival of shelters. If any nation refuses to go and worship the Lord Almighty as King, then rain will not fall on their land. If the Egyptians refuse to celebrate the festival of shelters, then they will be struck by the same disease that the Lord will send on every nation that refuses to go. This will be the punishment that will fall on Egypt and on all the other nations if they do not celebrate the festival of shelters. At that time, even the harness bells of the horses will be inscribed with the words, Dedicated to the Lord. The cooking pots in the temple will be as sacred as the bowls before the altar. Every cooking pot in Jerusalem and in all Judah will be set apart for use in the worship of the Lord Almighty. The people who offer sacrifices will use them for boiling the meat of the sacrifices. When that time comes, there will no longer be any merchant in the temple of the Lord Almighty. Now let's turn to Isaiah 65. In chapter 64, there is a mixture of hope, regretful repentance, and supplication, including these verses. For since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you, who works for those who wait for him. You welcome those who gladly do good, who follow godly ways. But you have been very angry with us, for we are not godly. We are constant sinners. How can people like us be saved? We are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. Isaiah 65 Heading God's Punishment of the Rebellious The Lord said, I was ready to answer my people's prayers, but they did not pray. I was ready for them to find me, but they did not even try. The nation did not pray to me, even though I was always ready to answer, Here I am! I will help you! I have always been ready to welcome my people who stubbornly do what is wrong and go their own way. They shamelessly keep on making me angry. They offer pagan sacrifices at sacred gardens and burn incense on pagan altars. At night they go to caves and tombs to consult the spirits of the dead. They eat pork and drink broth made from meat offered in pagan sacrifices. And then they say to others, Keep away from us. We are too holy for you to touch. I can't stand people like that. My anger against them is like a fire that never goes out. I have already decided on their punishment, and their sentence is written down. I will not overlook what they have done, but will repay them for their sins and the sins of their ancestors. They have burned incense at pagan hill shrines and spoken evil of me, so I will punish them as their past deeds deserve. The Lord says, No one destroys good grapes. Instead they make wine with them. Neither will I destroy all my people. I will save those who serve me. I will bless the Israelites who belong to the tribe of Judah, and their descendants will possess my land of mountains. My chosen people who serve me will live there. They will worship me and will lead their sheep and cattle to pasture in the plain of Sharon in the west and in Trouble Valley in the east. But it will be different for you that forsake me, who ignore Zion, my sacred hill, and worship Gad and Mani, the gods of luck and fate. It will be your fate to die a violent death, 
because you did not answer when I called you or listen when I spoke. You chose to disobey me and do evil, and so I tell you that those who worship and obey me will have plenty to eat and drink, but you will be hungry and thirsty. They will be happy, but you will be disgraced. They will sing for joy, but you will cry with a broken heart. My chosen people will use your name as a curse. I, the Sovereign Lord, will put you to death, but I will give a new name to those who obey me. Anyone in the land who asks for a blessing will ask to be blessed by the faithful God. Whoever takes an oath will swear by the name of the faithful God. The troubles of the past will be gone and forgotten. Heading The New Creation The Lord says, I am making a new earth and new heavens. The events of the past will be completely forgotten. Be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. The new Jerusalem I make will be full of joy, and her people will be happy. I myself will be filled with joy because of Jerusalem and her people. There will be no weeping there, no calling for help. Babies will no longer die in infancy, and all people will live out their lifespan. Those who live to be a hundred will be considered young. To die before that would be a sign that I had punished them. People will build houses and get to live in them. They will not be used by someone else. They will plant vineyards and enjoy the wine. It will not be drunk by others. Like trees, my people will live long lives. They will fully enjoy the things that they have worked for. The work they do will be successful, and their children will not meet with disaster. I will bless them and their descendants for all time to come. Even before they finish praying to me, I will answer their prayers. Wolves and lambs will eat together, lions will eat straw as cattle do, and snakes will no longer be dangerous. On Zion, my sacred hill, there will be nothing harmful or evil. Please open now to Revelation 19. In Revelation 18, we heard the chapter of doom against the city of Babylon, or Rome, or the united evil world system based on immoral commerce. If chapter 18 sounded familiar, it's because you were remembering Ezekiel 27. Revelation 19 After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a large crowd of people in heaven, saying, Praise God! Salvation, glory, and power belong to our God! True and just are his judgments! He has condemned the prostitute who was corrupting the earth with her immorality. God has punished her because she killed his servants. Again they shouted, Praise God! The smoke from the flames that consume the great city goes up forever and ever. The twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who was seated on the throne. They said, Amen! Praise God! Then there came from the throne the sound of a voice, saying, Praise God! All his servants and all people, both great and small, who have reverence for him. Then I heard what sounded like a crowd, like the sound of a roaring waterfall, like loud peals of thunder. I heard them say, Praise God, for the Lord our Almighty God is King. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let us praise His greatness. For the time has come for the wedding of the Lamb, and His bride has prepared herself for it. She has been given clean, shining linen to wear. 
parentheses, the linen is the good deeds of God's people, end parentheses. Then the angel said to me, Write this, Happy are those who have been invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And the angel added, These are the true words of God. I fell down at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, Don't do it. I'm a servant together with you and with other believers, all those who hold to the truth that Jesus revealed. Worship God. John speaks. For the truth that Jesus revealed is what inspires the prophets. Then I saw heaven open, and there was a white horse. Its rider is called Faithful and True. It is with justice that he judges and fights his battles. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and he wore many crowns on his head. He had a name written on him, but no one except himself knows what it is. The robe he wore was covered with blood. His name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven followed him, riding on white horses and dressed in clean white linen. Out of his mouth came a sharp sword with which he will defeat the nations. He will rule over them with a rod of iron, and he will trample out the wine in the winepress of the furious anger of the Almighty God. On his robe and on his thigh was written the name, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing on the sun. He shouted in a loud voice to all the birds flying in midair, Come and gather together for God's great feast. Come and eat the flesh of kings, generals, and soldiers, the flesh of horses and their riders, the flesh of all people, slave and free, great and small. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered to fight against the one who was riding on the horse and against his army. The beast was taken prisoner together with the false prophet who had performed miracles in his presence. It was by those miracles that he had deceived those who had the mark of the beast and those who had worshipped the image of the beast. The beast and the false prophet were both thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. Their armies were killed by the sword that comes out of the mouth of the one who was riding the horse, and all the birds ate all they could of their flesh. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, you are named Faithful and True and the Word of God. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You have the power to rule the nations and crush them like an iron rod crushes ceramic pots. The sword that comes from your mouth is able to kill all your enemies in one stroke. We rejoice with those in heaven at your victory. But our rejoicing is mixed with pity at the fate of those who do not follow you. Lord, please have mercy on us. We cry out for mercy because we're not ready for your victory. We personally mourn because of our own moral failures and mistakes. Please forgive us. And we mourn because of friends and relatives with whom we haven't been loving enough to share how they may be saved. And like Isaiah said, All the while we have been wasting time, you have been ready to answer our prayers. Yet we have not prayed. You have been saying, Here I am, I will help you and we have not asked for your help. 
So we will ask you now for those we care about who do not know you. Lord, help them to find you and give us courage to speak to them about you.